Hello everyone, this is John Frausto with TopspinTennis.com. In this video, I'm going to do an analysis on Stan Wawrinka's forehand. Um, he hails from Switzerland. He's six foot, 179 pounds. And uh, yeah, so the video comes courtesy of Paul Musera, who is a subscriber on, on my YouTube channel. And he asked if I could do an analysis on, on Stan's forehand. So Paul, I appreciate you uh, asking. Uh, here's the video. I hope you enjoy it. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's six foot. Uh, Stan Wawrinka is six foot, uh, 179 pounds. I just want to point out, I never thought that he really had what it took to to win a uh, Grand Slam at the um, at the ATP level. He did win one as a junior. Uh, he won the French Open, and um, then he was also able to do it on the ATP Tour. And what's interesting about that is only two other men have ever won the junior French Open title and the uh, men's French Open title, and that was Ivan Lendl, Mats Wielander, and Stan Wawrinka. So in pretty good company there. But um, before I get into the analysis, what I want to do is I want to, um, to, to let you know the difference between the two shots. So now the video on the left uh, – he is actually um, hitting a second serve return. And notice how far back behind the baseline is. I mean, you can see the back of the court here. And this is kind of signature stand. You know, on second serves, he likes to, to, to stand considerably back behind the baseline and just take an absolutely huge cut at the ball. And look where he's receiving the ball. I mean, it's pretty interesting. He's receiving a second serve. It's above his shoulders. That just tells you, um, you know, the kind of kick these these pros are able to to put on the ball. I mean, that ball bouncing, um, it's getting up above his shoulders, and yet he's 15, you know, 15, 18 feet behind the baseline. So, actually, pretty interesting perspective there. The video on the right, he actually is um, he's actually playing out points against uh, Grigor Dimitrov. So, um, he's on this shot, he's getting pulled off the court to the right. And you can see it. You'll see in the video later how he gets pulled off the court. Um, so picks a, um, a big target, not aiming for the lines. And uh, so different than the second serve return uh, on the video on the left. So um, just wanted to point that out. And, and, and with each of these shots, there's different intent with each one, right? So we're receiving the ball. We're going to send it back. The video on the left, what he's going to do with this, with this ball is he's going to send it high and heavy over the net, so good net clearance, and just try to get it back deep in the court so he has time to get back into the point. The video on the right here, he actually is going to, he's going to take the ball and he's going to be somewhat aggressive, not as much clearance. Uh, picks a big target, but um, there is more pace on it. So he's trying to take a little time away from Grigor. So those are the differences with those two shots. Let's go ahead and look at the technique now and uh, just show you how this stroke is, is somewhat unique to, uh, compared to his peers and then how it's very similar to you know, what the pros are doing on the tour. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take the video back. And we'll look at the uh we'll look at the grip the grip first and uh, Stan uses a uh, he's in a strong semi western grip and uh, which like I've said in other videos is ideal for he can still drive through the ball yet impart some some heavy heavy spin if he wants. Um Let's go ahead and look at the unit turn. So he takes that split step. Notice here too, just the uh, it's kind of interesting. Just look at how he, how the hand is relaxed, and you can just see little subtleties there where it just it'll assist in making that grip grip, grip change. The other thing he does too very well is he uses that off hand to help prep the racket as well. So that process when we go from our ready position to our forehand position. Both hands work together in order to make that grip change. Don't think it's just this hand. It is both hands that assist. There's the release. A little sooner, 
he does this a little sooner than some of the other pros. I mean, he's releasing right around like two o'clock. You know, I've talked in other videos that, you know, some are at three o'clock with the release. He's doing it right around two o'clock here. A little bit of a difference um, than others, but nothing substantial. Does a nice job with his unit turn here too. So notice the release. And the other thing I want you to notice is just look at the racket head to hand position. A little more vertical than, you know, someone like Dominic Team. Um, uh, you know, more sim similar to someone like Federer in that position. But keeps that racket high. The other thing, too, is that what I want you to notice in this position is just look at the hand position compared to the shoulders. Notice how this hand is staying below the, the shoulder. So he takes big cuts, but not as big as some of the other players on the tour. All right, I'm going to center this video a little more here. There you go. So let's look at that classic trophy pose. He really gets into it nicely here. Love this position here. So notice how that oops, notice how that non-hitting arm is nice and straight. Racket head is up, and he's loading on that outside leg. So just an ideal position here. He's very, and you can tell too, just notice how steady he is, able to balance that book on his head, and his eyes are focused on that ball. So just ideal. Uh, the video, I'm going to take the video back. Let's look here. Um, let's look in this position too. Same thing here, right? So head is steady, racket head is up, non-hitting arm is, um, is vertical. So ideal position. One thing I want you to notice too, in the video on the right, it's really interesting. If you haven't watched my, um, my the video that I've done on the ideal spacing on a forehand, I'll put the link down below. But notice how this is a great position. Notice how that non-hitting arm, how it helps with balance and spacing. It's almost like he can catch that tennis ball before he's going to release and hit. Watch that. It almost catches it. But now he understands with that non-hitting arm out, the spacing that he needs gets good extension there, and then he's going to come through and absolutely rip the ball. All right, so there's the trophy pose. Um, he's loading well. Both videos, he's in a uh, like a open stance as well. If you notice, he's in a, uh, just loading on that outside foot, and then he's absolutely going to pull up and across on the ball. All right, let's look at the racket drop. There's the drop right there. So notice the, the, the uh, racket angle position here. See how that face is, is closed? Same, uh, same on the video on the left, I, same position. The other thing, too, is you know I've talked about not breaking the plane, and he doesn't do that. He's able to keep everything on the right side of his body. And that's just more of a compact stroke, right? So we keep everything on the right side, get a little better leg, you find the ball a little better, so ideal position there. Notice, too, how he's loading from the ground. You can see here how his weight is starting to go up, too. Watch, watch how he starts lifting here. So he loads from the ground up. The coil, the lift. And then look at how he's going to that ball. So I have um, these videos are are um, in sync with the contact point. So notice where he's making contact. He's you know um, right around shoulder level uh, in this video here, right? And this one it's above the shoulders. He has no problems um, hitting the ball. Uh, you know, above his shoulders, waist high, he can he can make contact and, and absolutely uh, crush the ball at any height. He's just so strong, such good technique. One thing I want you to notice too is Stan is in a bent position with his forehand, um, so that elbow is slightly bent, unlike someone like Federer or Nadal who's in a straight arm position. And then let's just look at the rotation here. So finds the ball. 
There you get some extension, and then he pulls up and across here. Now, the, the one thing that I want you to watch, too, is just notice here how the shoulders really don't, um, don't turn as much. See how you can see kind of his, his, his body still facing the target? And I think that's more so because of the gameplay situation, right? I think if he had more time, you know, maybe in a practice session, you're going to see him rotate a little more with the shoulders and hips. Uh, see how the hips are square here to the target. Hips are squared there to the target. Uh, so once again, the circumstances, um, the ball's coming a lot quicker. It doesn't have the time to really load and rotate those hips and shoulders. Now, that doesn't mean that he doesn't wrap that racket around his body here. That just tells you like the flexibility and the, and the racket head speed that he has. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the stroke again in, in super slow motion. This was shot at 240 frames per second. Um, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please uh, hit the subscribe button below. Uh, if you really liked it, uh, share it with your friends, family, coaches, players. And don't forget to hit that notification bell below to get the latest videos uh, from Topspin Tennis. All right, enjoy your day.